So I've got a board with 30 squares on it, and those squares are filled by NBA stars. Those NBA stars are the 30 highest overall players as ordered by NBA 2K23. I've given all 30 players a team to represent. 24 of those players remain on their original team, Embiid on the Sixers, Giannis on the Bucks, etc. While six players who are the second highest overall player on their original team will represent teams without a top 30 player. Anthony Davis, the Timberwolves, Kyrie, the Pistons, etc. Following me so far? To balance each star's supporting cast, I drafted the entire rest of the NBA one by one in reverse order of overall. Basically, I gave the lower overall stars a slightly better supporting cast so it's all relatively balanced. You can pause the vid and check out my spreadsheet if you really want. We'll use this wheel to randomize two opponents who will then battle head to head with their squads. Whichever star vanquishes their foe will advance and take over their spot on the board and we're going until there's just one face left. Games will be played on Hall of Fame, six minute quarters, game speed on 60. I'll also be incorporating SimCast at moments. And by the way, this vid is my take on the Imperial Materialism videos that are currently flooding YouTube. The first of which I saw was made on 2K by Frosty, so check him out. Frosty's vid was inspired by Dean's World on Madden, so yeah, check him out as well. Now let's rock and roll. Alrighty, oh, let's get to it. First player to launch an attack in this video will be DeMar DeRozan? And his matchup out of the gates is one Anthony Davis. Oh, and I already screwed up. Since we landed on DeMar first and he's the challenger, we should have had AD defending his home court. You'll see the opposite in just one second. That's my bad. DeMar's Bulls versus 80s T-Wolves was a banger. What better way to start this adventure than with a one point game with two minutes remaining? Watch this insane sequence. Bull Bull lob to 80 in the half court. What? DeMar DeRozan in the clutch with an and one followed by Davis with a wild and one in response. How? Mr. Street close again in the clutch with a drop step finish. One last superstar moment from a Disney blocking a Fox dunk attempt to close the game. 31 and 12, four blocks for Davis in a statement opening game. DeMar's run is quickly over as AD claims his square. And that brings us to the final wrinkle in this video in this challenge when a foe gets vanquished the star that did the vanquishing then claims that foe for their own team or in english uh now demar joins anthony davis's team yeah we're gonna stack some of these lineups our second star to launch an attack is donovan mitchell and the cavaliers the 71 point man he'll be taking his parade into uh, paul george okay representing the magic spida versus pg-13 it was an ugly start for mitchell and all his teammates while chris paul george had a nice start a get it because their names conjoined. I was actually very disappointed in Mitchell and the Cavs who were blown out by halftime. They'd make the game a bit more respectable. Tyler Hero tried backpacking Donovan. Sheesh. Jamal Murray actually outplayed Paul George. D Mitch is Gonzo Alonso while Paul George enters new territory. Game three, let's go. Who we got? Oh my, let's go. We got a superstar, boys. Nikola Jokic. Might we see an early exit from the two-time empty? Oh, nah. Steph? Yo, we got a heater already. We got a heater already. Joker's supporting cast is highlighted by a healthy Cade Cunningham, while Steph has a dynamic Pacers duo running with him. The first half was uneventful, but saw Steph out to a small lead. Steph ran cold in the second, while Joker finally woke up to put his nuggets up at the half. Into the fourth quarter, Jokic finished on the slice in transition, and the Warriors couldn't keep him off the free throw line. Steph simply couldn't buy a triple, and with two minutes left, the nuggets would get team takeover, and it was wraps. Joker shot poorly, but did just enough. Steph? Yeah, not so much. Just like that, the reigning finals MVP is ousted, and he he joins Nikola Jokic, who is now the prohibitive favorite with Curry as his wingman. Game four, do we get another top bro battle? No, but LaMelo Ball should be interesting. And who's the youngster gonna face in his first? Oh, wow, another youngster. My Canadian brother, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Let's go. Shea has Clay. LaMelo's Hornets Loki got stacked around him. Clay had a sip of Steph's secret stuff and couldn't stop bricking, while Jeremy Grant, uh, that dunk. Into the fourth, though, Shea was up and hit a nice step back in the paint. LaMelo tried to answer in the clutch, but he couldn't match SG. 6 for 21 for LaMelo wasn't near good enough. Triple B, more like triple L. Adios, LaMelo. He'll join Shea, who grabs the second spot. On to game five, where we're heading... Ooh! another top rower, Giannis. And Giannis will be taking his bucks to wherever Bam Adebayo is playing. I'll be honest, I can't remember where that is. Ah, yes, Bam is repping the Spurs with a solid supporting cast. Meanwhile, somehow Giannis's bucks ended up being 90% big man. That's, uh, that's probably my bad. The two teams combined for 10 points in the first quarter. Great work, 2K. Simcast would see Bam get out to a nice lead at the half. I watched Raul Neto, Nito, yeah, Raul, do this for 20 
seconds in a row. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, Giannis. Roster construction failed my guy, but Bam was awesome. Regardless, it's our first big upset as Bam grabs another spot and this train keeps rolling right into game six and into Joel MB. Another big dog, man. Let's go. Okay. Our opposition field is slowly dwindling and yo! Bam gets right back at it with a new teammate, no less. Our first look at a star playing with their conquered foe. Giannis and Bam looks good, but so did Joel with a jumper out the gate. CJ with a slicing finish. Bam with a dunk on the other end. Giannis inside. Sorry, I'm getting all worked up. It's just nice to, uh, you know, see some baskets actually go in the rim. You know, Philly was forcing way too much with CJ and Giannis began to dominate on both ends for Bam's spurs. Simcast actually saw Joel claw back and he was locked in. A post fade, a block. Lock? A midi? My guy was doing it all. But a costly brick with under two minutes remaining, followed up by a tough Giannis finish, then a sexy Giannis lob finish. Ooh, it was another W for Bam and his Spurs. He once again led the way too. Look at that. Not only does Bam claim another spot, but now he's taken down two top rowers. And with Giannis and Embiid, Bam might be impossible to topple at this point already. Game seven, do we get another double up? Yes, Shea with his second appearance. All right, just don't show me Bam again, please, because that's getting out of control. Okay, we're straight, brother. Julius Randle. Randle is solid supporting cast, but SGA with LaMelo is tough. Shea started the game with an and one, and he'd never look back, hitting the eventual dagger from the post. Drew Holiday absolutely sold the bread for Julius Randle. Yikes. Shea matches Bam now with his third spot and adds Julius Randle in the process. Game eight, another new, yep, fresh blood, Zion Williamson. He and the Pels will be taking on, oh, uh, Joker. And another little guy too, now on Joker's team. That little guy being Steph Curry, of course, and Jokic would also be become a massive favorite here if they pulled out a W. The Pels played through Zion early, which I thought was smart. He's their guy, but he just kept missing. No, seriously, look look at his start. That's so bad. He turned it around though, an and one and a lead to start the fourth. But in a shocking turn of events, Steph Curry showed out as a sheltered second option. A couple huge triples in the clutch and Zion bricked a massive free throw. Now that's a dynamic duo. Joker and Steph will be adding chuck a shot Zion as well as Nicola claims his third spot. Game nine, where are we going? Let's get to, uh, oh my word. Bam again, yo. I really feel bad for whoever this lands on to play. Oh no, Lamick. I actually don't mind LeBron's crew, but come on, man. Bam out here assembling the freaking Avengers. Look at LaFlop go. Braun was actually locked AF in the first quarter. Not, not sure why the Spurs weren't doubling. He was literally doing it all. Unfortunately, Bones Highland started shooting like he was Ray Charles and Giannis began to feast. Joel absolutely bullied LaBaby in the post and that was the final nail in his La Coffin. Bam, Nick Fury Adebayo clinches his fourth spot already. And yeah, he's adding Lathor to his squad as well. Already to her 10th game, look Looks like we're getting, yeah, first timer here with Dame. Maybe two virgins go at it here. Uh, yep, that's Jalen Brown. Okay, this game was effing ugly, man. 20 to 15 at the half. I let Simcast put us out of our misery and Jalen's Jazz won. I pledge to pay closer attention to his next game, but for now, Jalen claims a second spot and he claims Damian Lillard. On to game 11, we've got another challenge by the homie Shea. And where's he gonna be going? Okay, Bradley Beal for the first time. Oh, wow, super fitting. SG is out here trying to dominate the entire bottom row. I see you, bro. Shea has Randall and LaMelo. I think Brad is in some trouble here, but it was Shea's crew that started out slowly as the early stages of the game saw LaMelo and D'Angelo Russell bricking continuously. And shockingly, when I hit Simcast in this matchup, the severely undermanned Beal Wizards went off. LaMelo just kept selling. Bro, run to the rim, man. What are you doing? With a chance to cut it to single digits, you know who threw up another brick. LaMelo shot three of 14 in this game, but I blame Shea. How are you only going to take seven shots? Oh, and Beal takes a W shooting only two of 13. <laughs> I don't know about this sim, man. It's wild. Our first super impactful upset as Beal takes over each of Shea's spots and kidnaps Shea, LaMelo, and Julius Randle for his team. Game 12, we've still got some first timers to get to, and there's one, Jimmy G Buckets. His opponent will be, oh, what's up, uh, Jalen Brown? This would be a nice little coup for the gymster. Dame was actually the perfect addition for Jalen. Jimmy does have Ant, which is nice. Into the fourth, Jalen and the Jazz were in control, but after trading some hoops, Ant Edward would throw down to cut the lead to three. But Jalen, the leader of the team, handed the reins over to Damian Lillard. For three. Bang! 
Jimmy actually performed admirably, but in a loss. Jalen captures his third spot while Jimmy is ousted and will join the Jazz. Continuing along, we had another matchup of first timers with Kyrie Irving taking on Kawhi Leonard. Kyrie in light blue repping the Pistons, as mentioned in the intro. Shouts to my roster building. This game was tied in the fourth, but after an Alec Burks and one for the Clippers, Kyrie would float along the baseline for two, then slice past the defense for the lay. Emmanuel quickly was left wide open for some reason and with the dagger, Marvin Bagley an and one putback. Kawhi shot just four of 16 and scored 14 points. Kyrie grabs a second spot and Kawhi is ka finish. Even more first timers up in game 14 as we landed on James Harden who actually ended up back in Houston and he's going to be taking on Jason Tatum and the Baston Celtics. Harden and the Rockets got off to a strong start and Simcast didn't let that lead slip. Zach Levine with a tough and one in the fourth and then again with the step back dagger to put it away. Jalen Duran led Harden's team in scoring, which is uh, wild. Also wild, Jason Tatum eliminated. I uh, didn't didn't see that one coming. On to game 15. Uh, we're really getting deep. Oh my goodness. Bam's boys are back. This could get real ugly depending on who his opponent. Oh, James Harden again? Back to back with Jason Tatum now on board. Nah, nah. The winner of this specific game could very easily be the winner of our challenge. It's that pivotal. It would be a monumental upset though. Look at the Adam Bio Avengers, man. Embiid and Giannis were taking turns big bodying the Rockets in the early stages, while the point guard was busy dropping dimes all over the place. A Giannis finish gave Bam Spurs a 16-point lead into the fourth, and from that point forward, it was a flood. Giannis had 22 points on 10 of 12 shooting. Harden couldn't stop Bam? Not sure anybody else will be able to. He gets even more real estate. And with Harden eliminated, we've officially hit the halfway mark in terms of players remaining from 30 down to 15. Bam Adebayo leads the way with six spots. Bradley Beal has four. Nikola Jokic is back at three, but he remains a dark horse down the stretch here. Into the second half of matchups, we get Paul George for the first time in a minute. He'll be challenging a uh, first timer. Yes, Damanis Sabonis and the Kings. This game was never really close. PG and the Magic dominated with Georgia eventually hitting a dagger late. Paul adds a third spot and Sabonis to his team. He building a little something something down in Florida. Back to the wheel for another star and there he is. There he is. Luka Doncic finally making his debut. Who's he challenging though? Hopefully not an instant L. Oh, Trey Young. A battle of the 2018 draft. All right, boys, let's go. Both stars with solid supporting casts. I hope y'all ready. I <laughs> Trey Young had Nikola Vucevic tossing up mid-range hooks, whereas Luka was deferring to a thrashing Jalen Green. Okay. Trey would hit a triple in Luka's face to end the third down eight, but Luka cared not, hitting tough shot after tough shot after tough shot in the fourth. The Mavs would get team takeover down the stretch, and it was wraps. 34 and 10 for Luka in the win. Sheesh. Luka once again, the correct choice over Trey Young. I I'm sorry, Hawks fans. We all hate you. Game 18. Let's go. Let's get it. Kyrie repping the Pistons. Okay. Okay. And Big Kai Kai will be taking on oh his teammate Kevin Durant. First time we're seeing KD too. Indeed, Durant's debut. Kyrie's got Kawhi, however. Despite having a seeming two to one advantage, Kyrie's Pistons had zero shot in this game because, well, KD, he dominated this game from tip to tail, just getting to the rim at will. 35 points in 17 minutes. Durant will be making a late surge. After a dominant performance, he grabs two new spots as well. Kyrie and Kawhi to ride shotgun. Only 12 names left on our wheel, and yeah, yeah. Welcome back, Bamster. Do we get a heavyweight tilt or does Bam get... Yeah, of course. Of course, a first timer in Tyrese. That's gonna be a GG for me, brother. Poor, poor, poor Hallie. Okay, yeah, sure. This will be a nice even matchup. You're a liar. Crazy enough, Tyrese's boys actually got out to a lead to start this game. Nah, this was insane. Tyrese Halliburton and the cast of High School Musical 3 had a lead at half. Fortunately, Bam and the Spurs would get... Team takeover. And it was over. Nice little blowout right on time. Tyrese had three points. That's not good. That that That's not good. At least now he gets to be uh, Ant-Man? I, I don't know. Another spot for Bam. In game 20, we'd see one of the few remaining first-timers pop up in Devin Booker. And he'd be challenging another established threat in this video, Nikola Jokic. Barring a large upset, this would be a clutch addition for Jokic. And once again, we had the makings of an upset out the gates with Book and Co. jumping out to an early lead. But also, they didn't give it up. I mean, look at DeJounte Cook. Unfortunately, a few SpongeBob moments later, Zion 
would whip it out. And uh, by that, I mean his package or uh, um, his dunk package. Highlight reel slam after highlight reel slam. That rim got destroyed. Still, Book kept it close. In fact, Jokic and the Nugs would need team takeover to finally turn the tide in the fourth. Okay, but wait, this game was actually nuts. Book and the Suns kept fighting back. So Steph had to hit multiple super clutch shots down the stretch. I mean, he was amazing. But with just eight seconds left, Keldon Johnson for the Suns. Three-pointer. Out clutching Curry. Except not. Because moments later. Puts it in. Thank you, Mike Breen. Steph went sicko mode to absolutely bail out Jokic, earning him another spot and a D-book in the process. Just 10 players left in our challenge now, our second last first-timer, Pascal Siakam, and he gets matched up with the man who kicked this whole thing off, a Disney. This game was ugly, ugly, so I went to Simcast, who brought us into a tight fourth quarter. But late in the fourth, 80s boys would get team takeover, and Bull Bull would hit an eventual dagger out the post. Pascal really shot himself out of this game. AD making a late move? Clinching his third spot? We still have one first timer left and we're not getting him here. Paul George. Does he challenge our last first timer? Oh no, Kevin Durant. Okay. Uh, three spots for each of these dudes. Interesting matchup income. I do like KD's supporting cast a bit more and this game wasn't particularly close through three quarters. But to open the fourth, PG and Donovan Mitchell would connect on three straight triples to make it a contest. Kevin Durant though said F that noise driving for an and one and that was game folks. Donovan Mitchell did kill it in a loss. D Mitch along with Paul George to Monis Sabonis will all be joining Katie's crew and Katie might just be the favorite all of a sudden into the home stretch game 23 we've got yep the MVP back up in it Joker will be taking on in a big matchup Jalen Brown okay this would be an absolute coup for Jalen I feel like Jokic's nuggets have been fairly inconsistent I never know which Steph Curry's gonna show up I did get an answer pretty quickly as Steph connected on a contested triple Dame Lillard though cared not for his opposition hitting his second three of the game for Jalen's jazz after the nuggets pulled close Utah would get team <laughs> Over. And Dame went nuts. That was the turning point of the game. Each time Jokic's Nuggets would get within smelling distance, Damian Lillard would hit another big shot. It would be a comfy 10-point win for Jalen. Dame Lillard with a game-high 27 points. Indeed, a huge swing in this video. Jalen Brown claims four new spots from Jokic and beefed up his supporting cast. We're into the thick of it, man. Game 23, and there it is. The final first-timer, a Ja Morant. And Ja Ja will be taking on Kevin Durant. This is a mountain to climb for Jaw, six spots for KD, yikes. KD's nets are a powerhouse, simple. This is a major mismatch on paper. Kevin Durant got busy early to take a nice lead. Jaw was in it to win it though, including plays like ben oh! Morant, in fact, kept the shebang close through the first half. The game was tied. It was still a two-point game late in the third when Demonis Sabonis twisted one home for Brooklyn. Still a tight game into the fourth when Kawhi Leonard nailed a big three. From that point forward, Katie's Nets never looked back. The Grizzlies even got team takeover to end the game, but came up valiantly short. Kevin Durant, full value as the leader of his team, 21 and seven in the win. Another one down for Katie, although just one spot overtaken in the process. Oh, down to the final six players, man. No room for error here. And bam is back up. Let's go. If we see KD here, this is basically the fine. No, no, a Disney and his little squad. Okay. This is a huge chunk of our remaining board. Bam's boys are the perfect powerhouse at this point. Does AD stand a chance? Once again, the turning point for Bam Spurs was getting team takeover towards the end of the third quarter, and the tide had shifted. Damar really shot AD's wolves out of this game while Bam Spurs were a balanced beast. And Bam cleans up another three spots via AD. Man, our board is looking hella gray, boys. Five players left. Sorry, that was loud. But yeah, Jalen Brown back up. Unless this is Bam, Jalen's going to be a favorite, a heavy fit. Yeah, Bradley Beal. I mean, Brad's got some spots, but look at all that orange, man. Really not sure how the Jazz lose this game. And right as I say that, Boyan Bogdanovich smacked a triple to give Washington a nine point lead. Jalen's Jazz made a run to end the half, including a Steph bomb, and they never looked back in the third, going on a serious run. The last chance for Beal's whiz was when they got team takeover in the fourth, but Jokic worked the glass and Booker finished, and that was about all she wrote. With all the talent on this Jazz team, Kristaps is low-key the X factor for them. Amazing. Bradley Beal hung on as long as he could, but he gone, folks. And just like that, we're down to the final four. Bam out of bio. Kevin Durant, Jalen Brown, and Luka Doncic. Because of course, Luka's inevitable. Actually, though, Luka's personifying this meme right now. I mean, seriously, he's got two spots. Anyways, first participant in our final four, the Bam, the myth, the legend. And Bam will be going 
going in and challenging Kevin Durant. Okay. Luca gets a pass once again. Bam clears K Dizzle 10 spots to seven, but KD himself has been super dominant. Here's Kevin Durant's whole team. Very nice for sure. But Bam's roster is nuts. DeMar DeRozan can't even get any run. The game started ominously for KD as he fouled Giannis who finished a tough and one off rip. Bam worked a mismatch for the second hoop of the game. His spurs were off and running. Their lead ballooned before half. Everything was going their way. I mean, look at this brick by Tatum leading right into an Embiid bucket. Each time the Nets pulled close, Giannis would take over and get himself a hoop. The Spurs, of course, got team takeover in the clutch, but it backfired. A KD transition three cut their deficit to five. When it mattered most though, Joel Embiid took over. A short range jumper, then a block of Sabonis on the other end. That was game, baby. And that's lights out for KD's run. It was a good effort. Just two games remaining and yes, finally, Luka Doncic. And Luka will be challenging Jalen. Okay, honestly, a better outlook for Luka than Bam. So it's this team of monsters on the Jazz against Luka Doncic, Trey Young, and uh, nobody else. Frankly, I think this is a mismatch. Towards the end of the first quarter, Trey did what Trey does best and drew a foul, finishing the and one. Very next possession down, he'd blow by SGA and Dallas led by seven. Oh my word. The Mavs were grooving, man. Luka slipping back door for the free lay-in. Luka was doing it all. Defending D-Book on one end, throwing lobs on the other at Nah, nah, bro. Clint Capella with a putback just before half. The Mavs led by 20. 20! Look at Trey, man. I mean, they, they were just dominating. Team takeover? Sure. Trey Young with another and one finish. I mean, why not? This was the biggest blowout of this entire video, and it came in the most high leverage moment. Unreal. I mean, Luca was clowning them. 28 for Trey, 21, 4, and 7 for Luca. No matter what the situation, Luka Doncic will always find a way. He becomes one of two players left standing. Bam Adebayo representing the Spurs will be taking on Luka Doncic and his Dallas Mavericks. Final spin of this video, whoever we land on gets home court and Luka. Uh, of course, he would gain a slight advantage for the final. Bam owns 17 spots to Luka's 13, but that doesn't really matter at this point. Both teams going 10 deep with absolute studs. I'll let you guys decide which roster looks stronger heading into the final. Steph got things going for the Mavs and Luka got involved to give his boys an early cushion. That cushion was all but erased when John Morant decided to launch an individual multi-tiered attack on the rim. From that point forward, this game was a classic back and forth tilt with an eventual tied score at the half. In the third, we saw Jimmy G Bucket splash a three and Donovan Mitchell answer on the other end. A late Tatum bomb and we still had a tie game through three quarters. Then both teams decided, well, they just weren't going to miss in the fourth quarter. I mean, we were trading buckets left, right, and center from the inside, from deep, from literally everywhere they were scoring. Yet no team could grab a lead. There was no momentum. It was crazy. The final minute of the game would be pure chaos. Luka found a wide open Nikola Jokic on the perimeter, but he bricked it. That brick gave the Spurs team takeover, but Luka came up with a clutch block for the Mavs on the other end. With a chance to take the lead again, Zion Williamson would throw a brain dead pass, a turnover which led to an Embiid hoop for the Spurs. After a free Jokic floater inside, Lamicky James would brick a clutch free throw. Skip Bayless loves to see it. Initiating the offense, he'd defer to Steph Curry in the clutch, and Steph would get clamped by LeBron Skip Bayless hates to see it. Kevin Durant led all scorers in the final with 13 points. And in a truly surprising sequence of events, the last NBA player standing among the top 30 players in the league is one Bam Adebayo. A leader, a scholar, a victor, a champion. Honestly, I'm just super glad somebody stopped that goofball Luka Doncic. I mean, what was that run? Hey, this video took like uh, mm, two weeks to completely put together. Kind of nuts. So yeah, you should probably subscribe to my channel. I I'd say it's a good idea. Maybe watch another of my videos too. Okay, thanks for the support.